there are some really angry people out there on the internet at the moment. And I get it. January is a long, horrible month. Christmas debts are now starting to roll in. It's winter, so the weather's miserable anyway. It's horrible out there at the moment. And lots and lots of people are feeling very disenfranchised by everything. And the news is depressing all the time. And there are lots of people out there not getting the help that they need or that they want to help them navigate what's going on at the moment. And some people are incredibly angry that I've been successful in my application for universal credit and some people are furious at the amount of money that I'm getting from it. Now the only reason that I get it at all is pretty much thanks to Martin Lewis on the Money Saving Expert because he was saying I think last year and possibly even the year before if you are on a legacy benefit that's going to be ending and being amalgamated into the universal credit system don't stop your claim he said there is a managed migration and if for instance you are on working tax credits as so many people like me were if you just keep your claim open and eventually they'll get to you and they'll tell you that your claim is coming to an end and you have the opportunity to apply for the managed migration and it's a protected year so what it means is that for one year there will be certain allowances for you which mean that if you were a first time claimant and you got into the system fresh you probably wouldn't have got it and that is what will happen to me so when I get to the end of my year on the managed migration, the protected year there's no point in me being on universal credit um, I won't get anything, they're not helpful they don't really help you find avenues of work um, they're just there to record your your income and give you some money and meet you once every three months and say hello and 20 minutes later you're going home again it doesn't really achieve very much I mean I come I come to the system from a place of self-employment running my own business for 12 years and like a lot of small businesses I was hit hard by the pandemic and everything that's come since then so two-thirds of my business has just gone I am lucky because I work from home which means that my outgoings solely as running my business is very small anyway I work from my spare bedroom so I don't have any extra rent to pay there's a nominal usage of energy and it's really what I spend on stock, websites, e-commerce fees, things like that. So it's minimal compared to many businesses. And I certainly wouldn't exist if I was a bricks and mortar store. And that's why I have continued to run my business, even though it's barely making enough money for anything. Because it doesn't cost anything more to run than it makes. So it doesn't run at a loss, it kind of breaks even. But I want to keep running it because the things that I do within it are part of my everyday life. The creativity, the making stuff, the selling stuff. But because I run it from home and because I don't have any other real responsibilities at home, it meant that I could go off and do all sorts of other things to make money. And that's why I now have six or seven side hustles. 
one of which is passive because that's my savings the rest of them are things that I do throughout the week and if I added up the hours that I'm doing it probably works out at least to a full-time job because some of it takes a lot of time for not a lot of money it's like almost like being a gig worker to be honest with you I mean the money that I make from surveys is probably akin to driving for Uber or Deliveroo or something but when I put all those little incremental amounts of money into a pot it's giving me an income that's more than I spend. I have very, very small number of outgoings. I'm really careful about what money I do and don't spend. And I do have a little bit of breathing space because I have savings. And that's not a secret. Um, Universal Credit, the DWP, have three months worth of every single bank statement that I have. They know exactly what I have and they just take off certain amounts of money each month from my UC claim to cover that. So, people, yes, I know that I've said before how I don't get housing. Depends how you look at it. My rent is £600 a month, um, which I pay in two six-monthly instalments because I don't qualify for rent basically because I don't pass any credit checks so that's how I got this flat and that's because of my self-employed status and what have you so I have to pay that out every six months which is almost four thousand pounds so I need to have that breathing space to cover that and then I spend the next six months making it up again to pay for the next one that's how that works for me and that's how I pay for a lot of my bills I try to pay for things like insurances annually because it's cheaper. You pay more over the course of a year if you pay monthly direct debits. They all take their extra money and I'd rather not. So if I can pay for an insurance in one payment, I don't have to worry about it again. I don't have to worry about meeting monthly payments. I don't have to worry what's in the bank. It's been paid for. And that, again, is why I keep a certain amount of emergency savings that enables me gives me that breathing system to be able to do that and that's really important if you can do that and use that money for that emergency savings aren't spendies they're there for getting things that you have to have like i have to have car insurance i have to have home insurance i have to have business insurance well i don't but it's a bit of a risk and i like knowing that i can cover those things when they come and because of the way I lay out my spreadsheets, I know when things are coming, I know roughly how much I need to budget for. It means that everything gets paid for, because the last thing I want is to get into debt. I don't have any debt. I haven't had any debt in quite a few years now, and I would quite like it to stay that way. But people get really angry when they hear that you're on, say, universal credit, but you're not struggling hand to mouth. Now, if I wasn't eligible for universal credit, I wouldn't have got universal credit. The only reason I'm on it is because of this protected year. And if you are self-employed and you're being migrated from working tax credits, it's worth doing. I know a lot of people don't want to do it because every month you have to submit all your, all your, your income and all your expenses. But if you're organised, it doesn't take very long. As I said in one of my very recent videos, Get yourself organised. If you're self-employed anyway, you should be able to do this without any real trouble. So, this is the situation that I'm in. I was accepted onto Universal Credit last, I think my, my claim started last September. Um, and although... My rent, if I was paying monthly, would be 600 I don't get 600 it will only pay I think it's 398 but my something to do with the local housing authority will only pay up to a certain amount and then because of the amount of money that I lose against everything else because I do have a small income still um, on a bad month I can make 
450 on a good month um, like the next month that's coming is a good month and so of course the calculations will work out against the minimum income floor which I don't have to meet at the moment that's another thing about the protected year is and it's confusing because I don't know the other half of the system well enough to 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 make comparisons but if I don't hit the minimum income floor every month it pays me the difference so I submit all my incomes from all my different side hustles um, I submit my expenses which are pretty small to be honest with you um, I pay for my website for my business every month there's a little bit of mileage for one of my cleaning jobs um, I put in half of my mobile phone because it's like 50-50 across business and personal. So it's not very much as a general rule. And then they work out the calculations. There is also a protected amount which I think is about 190 a month which is the protected amount because I've, I'm on the managed migration. The system is so complicated, I mean the calculations are more complicated than one of my spreadsheets and I know that different elements are some are more complicated than others some are more incendiary to people than others so if someone's having a go at me about how much money I get under the managed migration for that protected year and let's say they're a single parent with two kids and they're they're struggling to manage the system with the I think the child tax element or something like that you can't compare the two things they're they're different they're completely different ways of claiming the circumstances are completely different I don't have the same circumstances as lots of other people I don't have children I don't have any kind of dependence. I'm not a carer. I live on my own. Everything I pay for is is for me. And it's hard to explain this to someone who's just angry. And the other problem is that people will watch one video because it's come up in their feed and they'll just dive right in and get really angry about it. But you need to look at some of the others because my universal credit experience is also a learning curve. Mine started last September. I don't really understand the system because I've never really been in the benefit system, so to speak. Working tax credits was a, a considerably simpler um, simpler way of doing things for the self-employed who are on lower incomes. And if you have been self-employed or you are self-employed on working tax credits, you will know what an incredibly simple and easy system it was. You would put in your self-assessment at the beginning of the year um, and you would use that for your working tax credit claim, which you did in June. They'd make the calculation, tell you how much you were getting each month for a year. It was bye-bye, see you again in a year. And that was it and then they'd just make an adjustment after the year depending on your your income there. It wasn't a huge amount of money, it was definitely a lot less than than universal credit is, you know. I was getting about two hundred pounds a month on on working tax credits. But there was a lot less involved in it. And I don't know how the work how the universal credit system works. I don't understand it. I hear there's just there were just so many opinions. I mean, mine seems like a relatively simple case. You know, I don't get worried about it. I don't get upset. I don't get angry. There's no point. And that's again why I have these emergency savings is to give me the breathing space so that I'm not panicking about can I pay for my energy this month? Am I going to eat today? I've been in those situations and I know what it means to have no backup resources at all and it's terrifying I've been there I've lived it on several different occasions in my life where I've had nothing and I know how incredibly stressful it is it's absolutely terrifying and that's why I will not allow myself to be reliant on a system like the DWP because it will just eat you alive and spit you out it doesn't care it doesn't care at all 
It has no interest in your your well-being, your mental health, your physical health. It doesn't care if you have enough to eat, if you can keep a roof over your head. You have to look after yourself. And that's why I've worked really hard to squirrel away as much money as I can when times are good. So that when times aren't so good, there is enough there to give me that bit of breathing space. So that I'm not panicking. So that I'm not losing sleep at night. And when you're not panicking and you're not in that state of anxiety, it means you can be more level-headed about your choices, where you go from here, having the time to develop new ways of working. I mean, even if you want to go out and get a job, you might be applying for six, seven, eight months before you get that job. What are you going to do in the meantime? So whilst I'm looking in certain areas for more full-time work, in jobs that I feel will be useful, because I don't need to go and get the first job I can get, no matter how miserable it makes me. I don't need that level of money. If I'm going to give up the way I live now, I want it to be for like a nine to five job or a part time job that adds something to my life. Because again, I've done horrible jobs. I did it for like 20 years of doing jobs that I hated, that ruined my life, that um, just made me not want to wake up in the morning. I've, I've had jobs like that because of the toxic work environments and the awful work and just, just basically really depressing. And when you get stuck into it, it's hard to get out. And I have snapping points, but boy, when I hit a snapping point, I really hit it. So... That's kind of where I am. And thankfully, YouTube is very good at spotting angry commenters and it does stick them into the held for review pile so I have had to delete a few comments lately which it's just not constructive I wouldn't mind if they were saying something constructive with it but just screaming and shouting at me because of a decision that was made by a system that they feel let down by isn't constructive. So, sorry, if that was your comment, it's gone. And there's been a few like that this last week, and I think January's probably got to everybody. And I guess people are back on, back on YouTube. YouTube was, was quite volatile for a while, from about October, and then it went really quiet just before Christmas and this month has actually been really quiet and now suddenly I've noticed a lot more angry people rejoining and I think everything's just getting to everybody so I'm happy to have constructive conversations but if you're just going to scream and shout because you're disenfranchised by the same system that I don't let myself get wound up about. I can't let your messages through, I'm sorry, because it's not helpful, it's not helpful to anyone. There's a whole raft of viewpoints about a lot of the stuff that I talk about. And most of the comments I let through, there are people in really awful situations. And there are people like me who are just navigate, navigating a slightly irritating set of bu bureaucracy. And it does affect everybody differently. It's, um, there are so many different experiences of the same system. And I don't know if it's because of people's different circumstances. I don't know if there are certain uh, DWP offices, like the job centres that you go to for working tax credits, whether some are more toxic than others. I think mine seems to be quite nice the staff that i've met so far have been quite nice chatty friendly they seem helpful but i'm also quite a chatty friendly person as well i don't go in there thinking they're all out to get me i try to be nice about it but i don't have a history with these these people with these places i've never been 
let down badly. I've never ended up on the streets because someone made a wrong decision or couldn't be bothered to put an application through properly. And I don't know what goes on in all those offices. And I don't have some of the circumstances. I don't have children. So I'm not navigating those enormous pressures that come with that. I don't have um, a disability. I don't have mental health problems. So I'm not trying to uh, like navigate um, those elements of universal credit. And, you know, it's educating me. Lots of the comments that I get are people telling me what it's like or the complications that they have from it. And that's a whole different different set of people. I wish there were more channels from ordinary people talking about their experiences because there actually aren't that many. When you type in universal credit into YouTube, you get lots of businessy type how to's. There are one or two really good channels out there dishing the dirt on it. People who've worked on the inside. There are some people who work in um, advice centres who do some really interesting little live streams about it, about different elements of it and answer questions. But I don't think there are enough channels from people just sitting at home like me who have things to say about the system and if they can put it into a more like eloquent summary, don't scream and shout at the camera and then put that onto YouTube. Try and be diplomatic about it. You could end up starting a little revolution in your own front room because to me that is what YouTube is for. It's for ordinary people to get their say where no one else is listening or where they feel unheard. And there really are some great channels doing that. So if you're feeling particularly disenfranchised by the system and you don't feel like your word is getting out there, start a YouTube channel. It's just so easy. You just record something on your phone and you upload it to YouTube Studio. Um, obviously follow the rules. There are rules on using music and probably on the amount of swearing you do. I try not to swear because it disalienates people. It's not necessary. I can say things without having to put a swear word in the middle. Um, so yeah, I just I just wanted to finish today on that because if I don't say it, by the morning I'll have forgotten it, as it often happens. And I just wanted to say a few things on that. But of course, YouTube is for everybody, and maybe not everybody should be on YouTube. Or the internet, <laughs> as uh, as we sometimes see. So I just wanted to just say that, and that's ended up taking me 23 minutes. I need to talk less. Anyway, so yeah, that's my update. And I know that lots of YouTube channels have been doing posts recently on the number of angry comments they're getting and the number of trolls, and I think it's just that time of the year. I don't take it personally because if people scream and shout at me down the YouTube comments, they don't know me. They've just seen a video that I posted. They've seen it as an isolated post, not as the entire channel. So they don't actually know the history or what's actually involved and how I've kind of got here. And my channel's been going for over a year now, so there's quite a lot to watch, but I have put everything into playlists, so there is, if there are certain aspects that you want to know more about, like there's one for universal credit, I've got one that's for the frugal cooking aspect, um, and I've tried to split it up so it's easier to find things. Just type in a search word. If you're looking to find out about universal credit, just type a search word, and it'll find things across the channel. I try to tag properly and put proper titles in. Anyway, so I'm going to go now because I think that's that's quite enough for one evening. And I've got this off my chest. I can have a slightly more relaxed evening. So I hope you're all well and um, yeah, talk to you soon. Bye bye.